Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. One of the biggest benefits of using a 3D scanner is the ability to capture all geometry of an object quickly and accurately. This scan can be used for inspections or reverse engineering without the need to go back and forth between the part and your notebook to write down all key pieces of information. Even then, there is room for error that can occur with hand measurements. By using a 3D scanner, we can quickly capture all the information from a part we need and extract key surfaces for references to drive our design cycle. In the second video of our Airbox case study, we'll be going over how to extract reference bodies using the Geomagic for SolidWorks add-in. While Scan the 3D can be used at times, this add-in allows us to quickly import in large sets of data and extract sketches, solid bodies, and surfaces directly from our mesh. Now, I've already imported in our 3D scan of a bike frame for the intention to create an air box on the upper half of it. There are several beams, mounting locations, and surfaces I need to account for, and having them as solid bodies will help with assemblies and collision detection versus the graphical mesh body that we have now. The first feature we'll be making is a lofted surface of the frame. We need just the inner wall, so I'm going to use our cross-section tool to create reference spline lines where our sketch plane intersects with the mesh. There is a bit of noise data around our frame, which we don't want or need inside of our sketch feature, and we'll just slow down how it's being generated. To work around this, I'm going to use the limit selection options within our cross-section tool to highlight just the inner wall of our frame, so only our sketch is being pulled from the highlighted polygons of our mesh. After highlighting the rim, I can accept our cross-section and see that our reference spline line is being made. I will do this for two more sketch features further down the frame, so I can make a nice lofted surface from all three of these sketches. Once these have been generated, I can start editing our extracted out sketches and add in exact curves and lines to better represent the interface, using the reference spline for snapping points, so I know that my sketch line lies exactly on the mesh. Additionally, since the loft tool works best when all the sketches being used have the same number of control points, once I finish one sketch, I'm going to use the Convert Entities tool to project my sketches onto the other ones. I can manually adjust those projected sketch lines so that way they better match up with the reference spline extracted from the cross-section tool. With all three sketches finished, I can use the surface loft tool and connect them, creating one single surface to represent the inner wall of the frame. Looking at our surface over the mesh, looks like they imposed very well and they were following the subtle curves of that frame too. Now that the inner wall is done, let's move on to the next feature, these cylinders along the mounting location. These need to be extracted so we can know what clearance we need around our mounting points. The Geomagic Add-in has several tools to quickly extract prismatic shapes right from our mesh data. In this case, we will use the Extract Cylinder tool to get these clearance locations. With the tool enabled, we can highlight along a single cylinder at different points to get an average of the entire feature. We can accept the feature and generate it and we will get a new cylinder within our solid body tree and our feature tree. We can see that the cylinder matches well along our feature length, since we used an average of various spots to generate the cylinder. Repeating these steps, we extract out features along the remaining tubes. Once a feature has been made using the extract tool, it's treated like a normal SOLIDWORKS feature, so we can edit the extrusion or the sketch generating it by right-clicking inside of our feature tree. Now, cylinders are pretty easy to extract, but what about this throttle cable? We need to model around this, and it is a swept feature, and it only has a partial scan. This isn't an issue, however, since we can use the Extract Sweep tool to not only generate the path of the feature, but the diameter as well. We just need part of the sweep surface as well to help drive this extraction too, and making sure we have a nice average selection along the sweep will help with the extraction. Here, I'm highlighting part of the brake wire and making sure that all my highlighted areas are connected so we generate one single swept feature. I can also adjust our curve options, sketch type, and smoothness to ensure that that sweep feature generates very nice and smoothly for our path. Once the preview looks good, I'll click on the check mark to generate it. The diameter of our sweep is bigger than the cable itself. This is likely due to us selecting on larger and smaller diameter sections of that swept path, and the software just chose the larger diameter to drive the profile. 
we can just simply edit the sketch that our profile is on and add in a proper circle with the diameter we want. If we wanted to increase the length of our swept feature, we could do so by using the move face command. So that way we don't have to edit our actual swept path and we can just extend out the solid body as is. With the frame outlined and our tubes extracted for clearance, we only have one feature left to make, our actual mounting locations. Zooming in, we can actually see that these are at a slight angle, so we need to create a new plane to use for our sketches. Using the Extract Reference Plane tool, we can select on a similar surface on all of our mounted features and generate a plane based on the average of all these selections. Now, we could use our cross section tool again to get an outline for these features, but since there's a lot of items around this mount, extrusions from the bolts, and we also have some obscure data, it might just be easier to actually sketch out the mounts by tracing it over our mesh. Using our newly extracted plane, we will add a normal sketch feature onto it and start adding in circles, lines, and trim these all together and adding sketch fillets to start creating our mount. And we'll have the mesh shown in the background to be used as a guide. Once the sketch is made, we can use the normal extrude and cut tools to begin creating our actual mount. There's an angled surface internally that may need to be accounted for. Instead of trying to create this angled surface within our first extrusion, we can create a new solid body to boolean away from our mounting feature. We can quickly extract out a flat surface plane which can be used to cut a newly extruded cylinder from our first sketch. Once the cylinder has been cut, we can use the solid boolean command inside of SOLIDWORKS, leaving us with a perfect representation of one of our mounting locations. To create the remaining three, I'll just use the linear pattern tool so that way we can place them all at a set distance and along a path. In this case, the path will be one of the cylinders we extracted out earlier. With that, we now have some key surfaces to begin our modeling process. We created a lofted surface to represent the inner wall of our bike, key swept bodies and tubes to account for clearance, and all four mounting locations that we will need to use for our airbox. By having the mesh data from the scan, we can continuously extract out new information while maintaining accuracy of our part locations in the real world. We can even insert in this part file into another one, so if we make any changes or add new features, our downstream part files will account for this and it will help drive future designs and adjust accordingly. I hope you found the second video in our series helpful. Subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for the remaining ones or find more information on other engineering equipment.